what does 107 Facts have in common with South Park? We've always got more material to cover. From Kenny's last death to the inspiration behind Butters, we've got more to tell you about your favorite South Park residents. Hi, I'm JD with Channel Fred Earner, and we're here to dish another set of zany moments and info about this small town and its crazy citizens that you may not know. Yeah, flip, 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 flip the cop car! Flip the cop car! So get your snow caps and satire face ready, because we're counting down 107 more facts about South Park. Let's get started. Number 1. The show's iconic stop-motion paper cutout animation style was inspired by Terry Gilliam's paper cutout style from Monty Python's Flying Circus. South Park creators Matt Stone and Trey Parker are huge fans of Monty Python's Flying Circus. Number 2. In the first South Park original short, Jesus vs. Frosty, the name Kenny was associated with the character designed to serve the basis for Cartman. In the short, there's even a character that looks identical to the Kenny seen in the main series, but he isn't given a name. Oh my god! Number 3. Pixar films heavily influenced South Park's writing style. According to Stone and Parker, Pixar taught them that you can take a basic, played out plot and make the story unique by adding small twists, so an otherwise cliche story becomes something fresh and exciting. Number 4. In the unaired pilot episode, Cartman had a father and even a younger sister. They're briefly seen when Cartman's mom is setting the table for dinner. Number 5. The pilot episode of South Park had a budget of $300,000. It was written by Matt Stone and Trey Parker, and Parker directed it as well. Number 6. While the first episode was made out of construction paper cutouts, the actual process of animating the whole episode largely largely fell on Matt Stone and Trey Parker, with some help from animation director Eric Stowe. Number 7. They created the Starry Night Sky by putting holes into a black poster board and illuminating it from behind. The pulling of Kenny's blood was simulated by drawing an initial dot with a red marker pen, and gradually drawing more blood with every frame. Number 8. The characters who weren't speaking rarely moved, which saved on time and animation, so they're just staring blankly. Number 9. The finished pilot was 28 minutes long, which was too long to air. Trey Parker and Matt Stone didn't realize that more time should have been allowed for television commercials. In order to shorten the episode to 20 two minutes, Parker and Stone had to cut out a good chunk of material. Number 10. The idea for the town of South Park came from the real Colorado basin of the same name, where, according to the creators, a lot of folklore and news reports originated about UFO sightings, cattle mutilations, and Bigfoot sightings. Sounds like paradise. Number 11. Parker and Stone's original intentions for the pilot were to have the aliens' presence feature more frequently in the following episodes. But eventually they decided against this, because they didn't want the show to look like a parody of the popular science fiction TV series The X-Files. Number 12. During season 1's opening theme song, a TV can be seen in the background playing Matt Stone and Trey Parker's very first South Park short, Jesus vs. Frosty. Not long after, a billboard appears playing a clip from their updated version of the short, retitled The Spirit of Christmas. Number 13. The reason the episode Cartman Gets an Anal Probe contains so much explicit language, Dude! My brother a dildo? What's a dildo? Is that Parker felt pressured to live up to the standards of their original short, The Spirit of Christmas, which contains a lot of obscenities. As a result, Parker admitted that they may have tried to push things farther than they should have. Number 14. Each episode of South Park is made within the span of only six days. For other series, it usually takes months to complete an episode. Matt Stone and Trey Parker believe that pushing their crew to create episodes within six days encourages them to be more spontaneous in the creative process, making for a funnier show in the end. Number 15. Randy Marsh and Trey Parker's dad have a lot in common. Not only are they both named Randy, but they're also both geologists. Number 16. Hector Token Black was the only African American child in South Park until the introduction of Nicole in Cartman Finds Love during season 16. Number 17. Before Adrian Beard came on to play Token as a character, Parker and Stone originally took turns providing their voices for the few lines Token had as a minor character. Number 18. Officer Barbrady's voice is based on the voice of syndicated radio talk show host Dennis Prager. According to Trey Parker, Prager has a big, bombastic, and stupid voice that's oh so fun to mock. That is the silliest thing I've ever her. Number 19. Tally was created as an inside joke with the writing team when they took a boating trip. Some of the writers decided to take up wakeboarding, and somebody shouted, don't forget to bring a towel! Then everybody started saying this phrase in high-pitched voices, and thus, Tally was born. Tally is also a parody of characters that are created specifically to sell merchandise, which, oddly enough, Tally did. Don't preach to me, fatso! Number 20. Trey Parker was originally meant to voice Tally, but the crew thought his voice for the character sounded identical to Mr. Hanky. <laughs> So Tally's voice wound up being provided by Vernon Chapman, who was a writer and producer on the show. Number 21. The Super Best Friends were based on a long-running inside joke that Matt and Trey had, that all the religious deities were close friends and hung out together on a spaceship responding to crimes, much like the Justice League. Seaman, you and Swallow go get a sushi for dinner! <laughs> Number 22. In the episode Weight Gain 4000, Kathy Lee Gifford awards Cartman a trophy featuring a golden orgasmo on top. Orgasmo was the protagonist of a film of the same name that was written and directed by Trey Parker. The orgasmo trophy returns as a dodgeball trophy in the episode Conjoined Fetus Lady. Number 23. Cartman's cat, Mr. Kitty, has changed genders throughout the course of the series. In season 3, Mr. Kitty is a sought after female cat in heat that partakes in a cat orgy of epic proportions. In season 12, it's revealed that Mr. Kitty can spray out a concentrated urine required for cheesing, something only 
male cats can do. Number 24. When Butters was just a non-speaking background character, he was referred to as Puff Puff for the first two seasons. It wasn't until the season 3 episode, Two Guys Naked in a Hot Tub, that he got his big break. Number 25. The song Montage in the sports training sequence during the episode Aspen is the same song used in Matt and Trey's 2004 film Team America World Police, but with slightly altered lyrics. Number 26. Many of the show's staff veterans voice recurring characters on the show. Supervising producer Jennifer Howe voices Wendy's best friend Baby Stevens. Number 27. South Park has a habit of changing their characters' names over the course of the series. Jimmy Vollmer's last name was originally Swanson, Token Black's last name used to be a less blunt Williams, and Chris Stotch was originally Steven Stotch. Number 28. Matt Stone and Trey Parker apparently don't remember creating the season 3 episode Sexual Harassment Panda. They attribute this to their exhilarating efforts creating South Park bigger, longer, and uncut, whose production had ended around the same time season 3's production began. They compare the production of season 3 to something of a dream, with episodes like Sexual Harassment Panda being composed of delusionary writing. Despite this, they think the episode's still pretty funny. Number 29. Parker and Stone initially wrote the film South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut as something as a grand finale for the TV series. They personally thought that the show's second and third seasons were terrible enough to warrant its cancellation. Figuring they had nothing else to lose, they decided to make the movie a musical. Number 30. Production on South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut lasted for just one year. It usually takes an average of three years to complete a feature-length animated film. Number 31. Originally, the movie's title was South Park All Hell Breaks Loose. The Motion Picture Association of America had a strict rule forbidding the use of the word hell in a movie title for the sake of the film's promotional material. Even though plenty of movies before South Park had used the word hell in their titles, Matt Stone and Trey Parker gave in to the MPAA. Instead of All Hell Breaks Loose, Stone and Parker made their title into a dick joke. Bigger, longer, and uncut. Which the MPAA actually approved, only realizing the title's true meaning afterwards. Number 32. South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut cost $21 million to make, and went on to rake in over $52 million domestic, and over $80 million worldwide. Number 33. At the end of South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut, Kenny removes his hood for the first time in South Park history. Number 34. In the film, Kenny is voiced by Mike Judge, creator of Beavis and Butthead and King of the Hill. Yep. Number 35. Since the film, Kenny also talked without his hood in the Halloween episode A Nightmare on FaceTime. Kenny goes dressed as Iron Man, and his voice is only slightly modded with a robot voice. Number 36. In the credits for South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut, Saddam Hussein is credited as being played by himself. Even the credits have jokes. Number 37. In the film, the song called What Would Brian Boitano Do is a callback to a joke from the old short The Spirit of Christmas, in which the boys ask themselves, what would Brian Boitano do if he had to support either Santa or Jesus in the fight? Instead, the Olympic skater takes the high road, and teaches the boys about the true meaning of Christmas, just like the real Brian Boitano would do. Number 38. What would Brian Boitano do if he found out South Park was ribbing on him? He'd take it in stride and find it hilarious. Boitano loves that an entire generation of children look at him as some sort of Chuck Norris type figure, even if they know nothing of his victories in the Olympics. VH1 even did a special on South Park, in which they tried to get celebrities at the show picked on to come on and discuss the episodes. The thick-skinned Brian Boitano was the only one that participated. Kanye could learn a thing or two from Brian. Number 39. While Stone and Parker didn't need permission to use Brian Boitano, Boitano's name and likeness in their movie, Brian apparently needed Stone and Parker's permission to use What Would Brian Boitano Do on t-shirts he created for charity. Number 40. The South Park movie's song, Hell Isn't Good, was performed by Metallica's James Hetfield. Apparently, he wanted to keep this performance a secret. Number 41. You can see at the end of the film that, according to Cartman's battle with Saddam Hussein, his v considers the name Barbara Streisand a swear word. Number 42. Long before he would receive praise for his Broadway musical, The Book of Mormon, Trey Parker received praise for his musical talents at the Academy Awards in 2000. Parker was nominated for Best Original Song for Blaine Canada in South Park Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. Number 43. Trey Parker and Matt Stone attended the 72nd Academy Awards dressed like women, specifically in outfits that resemble dresses previously worn by Gwyneth Paltrow and Jennifer Lopez. They also decided to take acid before coming to the ceremony. Not your typical Oscar pre-party, or is it? Number 44. Being the huge South Park nerd that he was, Robin Williams led a stellar live performance of the movie's Oscar-nominated song, Blaine Canada. Number 45. The episode Proper Condom Use was based on teenagers' frustrations in the 80s due to the general public's demonization of sex during the AIDS epidemic, and Parker and Stone were 80s teens, of course. Number 46. The butt heads seen in How to Eat with Your Butt were based off comics that Trey Barker drew in high school, in which people had butts for heads. At one point, he seriously considered making it a premise for a show, but thought it would have been too juvenile. Coming from the co-creator of Terrence and Philip, that's really saying something. Number 47. The fight between Timmy and Jimmy in Cripple Fight was choreographed after an identical fight sequence in the movie They Live. They even animated 
credited it to the movie's original score. Number 48, Jimmy was supposed to be a one-off character that was created specifically to fight Timmy in Cripple Fight. In that episode, he actually isn't from South Park, but from a nearby town. Jimmy later spontaneously showed up in the classroom of South Park Elementary without explanation, simply because the writers loved him so much, even arguably more than Timmy. Number 49, according to a penis size chart seen in the episode TMI, Timmy's full name is Timmy Birch. Penis charts can teach you a lot. Number 50, a rumor circulated that Trey and Matt had two versions of the episode about last night produced. One where Obama won the 2008 election, and another where John McCain won. Boom, baby! This is false. The South Park crew thought Obama would win, so the only episode they produced focused on his victory. Their backup plan, if McCain won, was that they would overdub the episode with drunken commentary, creating something similar to Mystery Science Theater 3000. Number 51. While most South Park episodes are made in six days, the Imagination Land saga was developed over a course of three months prior to its air date. Why? Because Imagination Land was intended to be the second South Park movie, but the crew thought the story didn't loan itself well to a theatrically released film. They decided instead to split the story up into three episodes released over the course of three weeks. Despite this change of heart, the Imagination Land saga was released later on DVD and edited together to resemble a feature-length film. Number 52. Due to voice actor Isaac Hayes' abrupt departure from the show, Chef's lines in his final episode, The Return of Chef, are all spliced sentences using recordings from previous episodes. Strangely enough, it actually fits into the idea of Chef being brainwashed pretty well. Number 53. Darth Chef's voice actor, Peter Serafinowicz, also dubbed Darth Maul's line in Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. Number 54. In the episode, I'm a Little Bit Country, Benjamin Frank Franklin was voiced by none other than Norman Lear. Lear is responsible for creating the TV classics All in the Family, The Jeffersons, and Stanford and Son. Number 55. Man Bear Pig is an allegory for global warming. Parker and Stone came up with the idea for the creature after watching former Vice President Al Gore's documentary about global warming, called An Inconvenient Truth. In the film, Al Gore repeatedly preaches about the dangers of global warming and how nobody takes him seriously, but that they should. In the South Park episode, the creators show Gore as being somewhat desperate and using this cause for his own fame. Number 56. The scene where Cartman revives Kyle after the Man Bear Pig attack is similar to the CPR scene between Ed Harris and Elizabeth Mastrantonio in The Abyss. Number 57. Nobody on the writing staff knew who Mysterion was at the time of his first appearance, except for Parker and Stone, who always knew he was actually Kenny. Number 58. In the episode Mysterion Rises, the scene in which Cartman bonds with Cthulhu is a shot for shot replica of a scene from the Studio Ghibli film My Neighbor Totoro. Number 59. The episode Gluten Free Ebola was based on the entire South Park's writing room adopting a gluten free diet. It began when one writer named Kurt became gluten free and claimed he was much happier because of it. The rest of the writers made fun of him, until they slowly began adopting a gluten-free diet one by one, with the exception of one staff writer. I guess he really needs his cheesy poofs. Number 60. For season 18, Randy was just supposed to pretend to be Lord, but everything changed after Parker and Stone read an article in response to the first episode, in which Randy dressed up as Lord. The journalist called South Park's staff insensitive for making Lord Stan's father, claiming Lord was an artist with depth and deserved better. After reading the article, the South Park writers decided to make this journalist's twisted perception a reality. Thus, Randy became Lord's true identity. Number 61. Lord responded to her South Park representation, as well as a young female pop star being accused of being a 45-year-old male geologist can. She personally found it hilarious, and found herself singing, yeah, 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 I am Lord, for hours after seeing the episode. Number 62. In the episode Snook, Hillary Clinton's Southern accent is a spoof on when she delivered a speech in Selma, Alabama in a notable Southern drawl. Number 63. The Chewbacca defense used in the episode Chef Aid was a fictitious defense used by Johnny Cochran. That does not make sense! Similar to his red herring tactics in the O.J. Simpson trial, Cochran stated to the jury, if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. In reference to an earlier part in the trial, when prosecutor Christopher Darden asked Mr. Simpson to try on a bloody glove found at the murder scene. If Chewbacca lives on Endor, you must acquit! Number 64. For the season 18 finale featuring PewDiePie, the online game vlogger actually recorded his lines while on vacation in Japan and suffering from a bad case of the flu. Wow, that's a trooper. Number 65. PewDiePie has actually done a Let's Play of South Park, The Stick of Truth. Despite how many many game publishers typically feel about Let's Plays, Parker and Stone are actually appreciative of the ones for Stick of Truth, and see them as free publicity for their product. Number 66. In the episode Go Fund Yourself, Washington Redskins owner Dan Snyder picks up a thrown out newspaper, looks into the camera, and cries. This is actually a reference to a commercial for a long-running ad campaign by Keep America Beautiful Inc., a foundation committed to preventing pollution in the United States. The commercial featured a powerful image of a Native American looking into the camera and crying. Number 67. The episode Freemium Isn't Free was based on pitches the South Park Studio received from developers of freemium games, who wanted to create a freemium game similar to The Simpsons Tapped Out or Family Guy that quest for stuff. The developers put an emphasis on creating an addicting slot 
machine experience first and a good game last. Number 68, Happy Holograms was based on Parker and Stone's own frustrations with the death of the communal television experience that families once shared. They find that now their wives and children are separated from each other by their various tablets, which they prefer over an actual TV. Number 69, for the episode Tweak x Craig, South Park turned to their fan base for help. Viewers were asked to submit their fan art of Tweak and Craig in the Yaoi art style. Yaoi is fan fiction that center around romantic relationships between male characters. Number 70, of all the episodes in the series, there are only two episodes that the main boys don't appear in. Season 4's Pip and Season 10's A Million Little Fibers. Number 71, Kenny has died a total of 97 times in the show, over the course of 86 episodes. 98 if you count Rob Schneider as Kenny. Rob Schneider is Kenny! Number 72, while Matt Stone looks upon the show's earlier years more fondly, Trey Parker personally hates the first three seasons of the show, and could care less if they were spontaneously erased from time itself. Well, we are our own worst critics. Number 73, of everything they've done in the show, Trey Parker's absolute favorite South Park story is the Imagination Land trilogy. Number 74, when Saddam Hussein was imprisoned, the US Marines guarding him played South Park bigger, longer, and uncut for him several times, showing him the cartoon version of himself in the film. The soldier sent Parker and Stone a signed picture of Saddam in captivity, enjoying their film. Matt Stone considers this a highlight of his career. Number 75, after the episode Free Hat, Parker and Stone received a letter from Steven Spielberg, who thanked the duo, claiming he had finally made it now that he was officially a celebrity villain on South Park. To this day, Parker and Stone still can't tell whether or not the letter was sarcastic and written from a place of anger or not. Number 76, Free Hat was made at a time when Steven Spielberg had publicly announced that he was going to digitally touch up scenes from Raiders of the Lost Ark, the way George Lucas had touched up the original Star Wars trilogy. According to a source at Lucasfilm, Spielberg abruptly changed his mind after Free Hat aired, implying that the episode may have what snapped Spielberg out of it. Number 77. According to Matt Stone, after the episode Super Best Friends aired, David Blaine's fans began asking him for his Blaintology book that South Park made fun of. David Blaine had to tell these fans that no such book actually existed. Number 78. South Park caused even more confusion about David Blaine's image when people began asking him why he always said twa at the end of his sentences, which he doesn't. Blaine called Stone and Parker to ask where they got the impression, and according to Trey Parker, it was mostly random, but originated from a friend he had in high school that was a heavy metal musician that frequently made a twa sound. Number 79. At the end of the episode 201, Kyle's speech was heavily censored by Comedy Central, as well as the image of the Islamic prophet Muhammad. Due to the network's fear of terrorist threats, it wasn't until four years after the episode aired that the uncensored speech was leaked onto the internet, proving that the bleeps were not some sort of meta joke on the show's part. Ironically, Kyle's speech is about the dangers of letting terrorism censor comedy. Number 80. While many have merely dismissed the show as nothing more than endless profanities and toilet humor, South Park has actually been incorporated into a college curriculum. McDaniel College in Maryland offers a class in which professors screen South Park episodes for the students to break down and discuss the social issues covered throughout various episodes. Number 81. Cartman's cover of Lady Gaga's Poker Face is actually a playable song in the game Rock Band. It was added as a piece of downloadable content. Number 82. The episode Simpsons Did It came from Parker and Stone's frustrations of coming up with story ideas and finding out the Simpsons have already done it. In fact, in the episode The Wacky Molestation Adventure, Cartman was originally going to blot out the sun to get back at Stan and Kyle, and they worked all weekend on it, only to find out it was just like a Simpsons episode. Number 83. Several episodes focus on Kyle and his religion. Being the lone Jew has resulted in the animosity between him and the anti-Semitic Cartman, which becomes stronger as the series progresses. Parker and Stone have compared this relationship to the one shared by Archie Bunker and Michael Stivic on the 70s sitcom All in the Family. Number 84. When developing Kyle's character, Parker recalled there being only one Jewish student in his hometown of Conifer, Colorado, and described her as being the token Jewish person. He described a moment where all the kids sang Christmas songs and she had to come out by herself and sing a Hanukkah song. Number 85. So, we all know Leopold Butter Stotch, but how did he get his name? Parker and Stone actually got the name after calling the producer, Eric Stowe, Little Buddy for about three years, and eventually nicknaming him Butters. The character Butters' is warm and caring personality is based on Stowe. Number 86. Butters is the only kid in South Park who normally doesn't use curse words or profanity. His happy-go-lucky persona has been described as resembling that of a typical 1950s sitcom child character. Number 87. Randy and Sharon Marsh's names are derived from Parker's parents' names. According to Parker, Randy is the dingbat in the entire show, but he also said that his own dad is a great father, adding, I hold my father very dear, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to rip on him. Number 88. In the season 1 DVD, Parker stated that Mr. Mackey was based on his school counselor, who, when he saw Parker in the halls during class, would simply say, okay, Trey, get back to class now, okay? Number 89. Parker and Stone said that they chose Kathy Lee Gifford for the episode Weight Gain 4000 completely at random, not based on any particular reason or distaste for her. Shortly after it aired, the tabloid The Globe hired Susan Johnson to film herself 
introducing Frank Gifford, Kathy Lee Gifford's husband, for a newspaper story. The incident was the first of what Parker and Stone called the South Park Curse, in which something tragic or embarrassing happens to a celebrity shortly before or after they're featured on South Park. Number 90. In Waking 4000, Gifford appears at a parade hidden inside a bulletproof glass bubble. The bubble was inspired by an appearance that Pope John Paul II made in the Pope Mobile during his trip to Denver, which Parker and Stone also attended. They thought the design of the Pope Mobile, which has a bulletproof booth built into a back of a modified truck, was hilarious. Number 91. While Cartman Gets an Anal Probe was created almost entirely with construction paper, Waking 4000 was the first South Park episode made completely using computers. Number 92. There have been a slew of consultant writers for South Park, including comedians like Bill Hader, Kristen Schaal, Kenny Holtz, and Brad Neely. Number 93. SNL alum Bill Hader also produced many episodes, and even did some voice work, including the voice of the newsman in the episode's sponsored content and truth in advertising. Number 94. In 2013, South Park opened with an entirely 3D opening credit scene. This was accompanied with new animation and gave the show a new third dimension for its opening. Number 95. Whatever happened to Mr. Derp? Yes, the fan favorite character, Mr. Derp, replaced Chef in some earlier episodes. But where's he been since? He debuted in season 3's The Succubus, but you can still see Mr. Derp make a cameo in some episodes. Sometimes as part of crowds, and sometimes even in the kitchen saying something weird. He was even in the episode Timmy 2000 throwing lemonade at the Phil Collins show. <laughs> Number 96. Speaking of missing characters, whatever happened to Mephisto? Well, according to the show's creators, he's not dead. In fact, he made a cameo in the Queef Free music video. Number 97. In the episode Guitar Queero, when Thad says, I quit, I quit, I quit, he's referencing a scene from Tom Hanks' musical film, That Thing You Do. Number 98. Would you believe me if I told you the show was still using construction paper? Of course not, but it's pretty close. After the pilot episode, the construction paper used for the show was scanned and used for future episodes in the animation software, Maya. They've used some of the same textures for 19 years. Years. Number 99. Matt Stone used to voice Kyle without making any technical changes, but now he uses Pro Tools to add a childlike inflection to help make the voice sound more like a fourth grader's. Number 100. Parker and Stone worked with composer Robert Lopez on their musical The Book of Mormon. During the collaboration, the duo asked Lopez to come to their studio and create an episode with them and workshop ideas. Their collaboration led to the episode Broadway Brodown. Number 101. At the turn of the century, many shows and products used the year 2000 in their titles. To make fun of America being obsessed with 2000, Parker started putting the number and episode titles for a while. Some of them include Quintuplets 2000, The Tooth Fairy's Tats 2000, Cartman's Silly Hate Crime 2000, and Timmy 2000. Number 102. We all know the running gag of Kenny Die. But by now, Parker and Stone have pretty much abandoned the joke. So the last time we see Kenny die is in the episode Titties and Dragons, where Princess Kenny leaps from the top of the Sony building and falls to his death. Unfortunately, this time Stan and Kyle were not around to say, Oh my god, you killed Kenny! You bastards! Number 103. Another lesser known running gag on the show is an alien visitor that can be seen from time to time in the background or between frames of the show. Number 104. Kenny's death had an impact on pop culture. The character's death influenced Master P to write the song Kenny's Dead, which was featured on the Chef 8 album. Number 105. An introductory short precedes the episode Cartman Gets an Anal Probe. The short, called A Fireside Minute with Matt Stone and Trey Parker, shows Stone and Parker sitting in front of a fireplace with a dog named Old Scratch. Throughout the short, Old Scratch occasionally changes breeds. It's a different dog every time they cut to it. Bet you didn't notice that. Number 106. During the Guitar Hero and Rock Band craze, Rock Band added the song Timmy and the Lords of the Underworld to their official store for players to choose. Number 107. While his name is never revealed in the show, the lonely fat nerd in Make Love Not Warcraft is referred to as Noob's Pony in the episode script. Which satirical moments are your favorite? Did we leave anything out? Comment below and let us know. We have new videos dropping every week, so let us know which animated film or TV show you want us to cover next. And if you like getting more from your cartoons, subscribe to Channel Frederator, because remember, Frederator loves you.